add more dichloromethane to the flask to get the remnants of the paste of the solution and pour into the filter. You may have to do this a couple times to make sure that the flask is empty. The solution is now clear. The solution is now clear because the sodium sulfite dried the organic solvent. You also want to make sure that you don't fill up the round bottom flask more than half full. Once again, we'll Once the solvent has been evaporated off until about 0.5 to 1 milliliters for this experiment, you will need to first turn the vacuum off, release the vent, bring the round bottom flask out of the water bath, turn off the spin, turn off the temperature, and then turn off the rotovap itself. You will then remove the clamp and holding the round bottom flask from the bottom, slowly remove the flask from the bump trap. Make sure to clean the bump trap if it has gotten dirty. Also, you want to make sure that you turn off the water. You will need to then add one milliliter of petroleum ether into your round bottom flask. You will need to make your TLC plate before you spot the system. As you can see, this is a TLC plate. You will be making a pencil line for the baseline across the bottom, about 7 millimeters from the bottom. Then you will make a top line, the solvent front, about 2 millimeters from the top. You will then be making two pencil marks where you will be spotting the solvent with the capillaries. This is a capillary tube that you'll be using to dip into your round bottom flask and touch the TLC plate. On the pencil lines where you have marked, dot the capillary three touches and then nine touches, which will show a distinct separation difference. This is the TLC chamber, which contains the beaker, the watch glass, the filter paper, and the solvent system. We have arbitrarily chosen the solvent system to be 85% PET ether and 15% dichloromethane. You will be making 10 milliliters of your chosen solvent system, which will be assigned by your TA. For us, we added 8.5 milliliters of PET ether and 1.5 milliliters of dichloromethane and then added about 8 milliliters of that into the beaker. You want to then make sure that the filter paper is completely saturated with the watch glass on top before adding your TLC plate. To completely saturate the chamber, you need to make sure that you're swirling the solvent system in the beaker. You will then add your TLC plate into the TLC chamber, making sure that the baseline is above the solvent system. You will then wait as the solvent front will rise up the TLC plate and to the top of the solvent front. You can already see the compounds begin to separate. As you can see, this, the spots are already starting to separate. The top band is the yellow band, which is the beta-carotene. The bottom band is red, which is the lycopene. Remove the TLC plate with forceps and lay it down on your bench to dry. You'll need to make sure the solvent is dry before you circle the spots.
Circle every spot that you see on the TLC plate and you will use this information to calculate the RF value outside of lab. You'll need to set up the column for the column chromatography by first getting the special column that you'll need at the front. You'll need to clamp that column onto your lab bench and then add a large round bottom flask to the bottom while we're packing it. You'll then connect that to the trap, making sure that everything is clamped. The trap will then be connected to the vacuum from the side, just as we've done in the last two weeks. You will then take your slurry, which is 18 to 20 grams of silica and 80 milliliters of pet ether, and pour it through the top using a funnel. You will then turn on the vacuum and open the vent and allow the solvent, the pet ether, to pack the silica into the column. You'll need to make sure that you're using a solid addition funnel to pour the slurry. And then stopping by removing the vacuum before all of the solvent has reached the silica. You will then pour the removed solvent back into the beaker, reattach the flask to the column, and then pouring that removed solvent back into the column. You want to make sure you get all of the silica in the column to into packed into the column. Now make sure that you have a cork ring at the bottom of your flask to hold everything securely. Once again, you want to pour the removed solvent into the column. You will reattach the vacuum, allowing the solvent to pack the column once again but do not let the solvent fall below the line of the silica. You need to make sure that you do not dry out your column, otherwise you will have to start over. Instead of just turning off the vacuum, you can also remove and put the tube back on the side. Whichever way you do, just make sure the top of the silica slurry is not being dried out and that you leave some solvent at the top. You will then be adding one centimeter of sand to the top of the column. As you can see, the solvent is not above the line of the sand but it is above the line of the silica slurry, which is what is really important. We'll be adding, as you can see, the sand will form a band in the column. Whatever sand is stuck to the side of the column, you'll just need to add some pet ether to the column. You will then reattach the vacuum which will pull the solvent down through the column, packing it completely. 